Um, it's Shane Teske here at MotorCheck and I'm delighted to be joined by James Chalky at our partner CarWeb in the UK who's going to take us through a demonstration of MotorCheck's new E3 technical system. I've been hearing a lot about this James. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. It's, <laughs> it's a fantastic system. Thanks for having me to, to, to run through a demo for you. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is find out just make sure that we're looking up the Irish version for you, and we're going to put a registration in for VW Golf <laughs> at 05 Charlie Echo 4515. Let's just enter that, and here we go. So there's two parts of the data. Uh, the first part of the data we see is uh, the vehicle registration data, so we'll just scroll through this uh, so you can see it. Obviously it gives you the vehicle registration mark, mm -hmm. it'll give you the first part of the VIN, and confirm the make and model for you, uh, the model series. Um, we can then see some registration dates here, so we can see it's 21st of 7th, 2005 registered. Uh, we can see it's a diesel. Um, it gives us all sorts of other information that we've gained through uh, VIN desequencing, so we can see all the fuel consumption, the heights, weights, curb weights, mm. uh, power outputs, cylinder arrangement, um, and it goes on and on and on and on. So okay. there's plenty of data there, that's the first part. Um, but the part we're really interested in is this technical data. So if I just click on this tab up here, um, it should take us straight into uh, the manufacturer repair times uh, for this particular vehicle. Right. So the purpose of this system is, is for a general or independent garage um, to be able to look up manufacturer repair times for whatever vehicle happens to turn up in the workshop. So if I just quickly go on to uh, maintenance, um, click this first tab, this will give us all of the manufacturer service uh, uh, schedule for, for that particular vehicle. So we've got um, at the top of the top of the sheet is service indicator reset. Um, uh, you can see it comes up with a nice uh, image there, shows us the, the clocks and gives us a procedure to reset the uh, service line. Obviously every manufacturer is different. And what we try to do with this system is to get as much information there from the manufacturer as possible. Oh. Um, so we'll skip uh, we'll skip on now to uh, say a forty thousand mile service, um, just to see what's included. Um, so we clicked on the forty thousand service, and the first thing we have here uh, is a confirmation forty thousand or forty eight months. Um, item indicates mandatory service item. So the first section of data, uh, the mandatory parts required for the service. You can see uh, engine oil, engine sump, including filter, 3.8 litres, um, oil drain, plug, uh, oil pan, seal ring, uh, oil filter, so on and so forth. So it gives us a list of parts that are required. Um, if we scroll down the sheet here, you can see that we've got uh, each of the uh, mandatory steps of the service with a little tick box. Um, so renew engine oil, um, it gives us the procedure, uh, renew oil filter, um, and so on and so forth. Right. It will also give you uh, a time um, per procedure, and at the end of the sheet it should give me, uh, if we go to the top of the sheet, there we go, total time, 1 hour 30. Um, so I can print the sheet out if I, if I wanted to print it out and hand it to a technician and get him to tick it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, or I could also print it out, have it ticked and, and pass it straight on to the customer as part of the customer service scheduling um, so they can see exactly what's been done on their vehicle. And, and James, um, can I just ask you, because that's quite exciting, all of that information came just from the registration number of the car? Um, yes, absolutely. We've, we've matched directly one-to-one -one the registration number to the manufacturer service time. So um, in, in days gone by, you would have to manually select the make, the model, the variant, the year, the engine size. Mm. Um, we've taken all of the guesswork out of the, uh, out of the procedure for you. So it's literally put the registration number in and get the right data back for that vehicle. And so, um, would, would that mean that a non-franchise dealer operating under the, the block exemption rules, he would not be interfering with any vehicle's warranties or so forth if he follows the instructions that we're providing here in the technical system. That's correct, yeah, this is all uh, manufacturer uh, gained information, so this okay. is exactly the same information as your, your uh, Volkswagen dealer would have within their own franchised workshop. Right, right, very good. Um, so, 
we'll show you the servicing part. If I just go quickly, I'll flip through some of these because there's there's one really exciting uh, thing I want to show you on here. But I'll quickly flip through the the uh, drawing section. You can see we've got um, drawings of various different components, uh, brake, steering, suspension, clutch, etc. If I click on one of these drawings here. You can see it, it expands the drawing and straight away it will give me the torque settings for those individual components as well. So we're looking at a, a brake master cylinder. Um, and you can see on, on the cylinder here we have in green um, the, the various different torques. Right. Um, and again, these pictures can be printed out and handed to the workshop. So um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's quite clever. Mm. Um, there is a, a procedure section. Um, that will give me a step-by-step -step procedure for, um, well, you can see here, it says common, common tasks including key programming, timing chains, uh, and belt layouts, etc. So if we click on procedures and just have a quick look at, uh, at what we have populated here. Mm -hmm. While that's coming up, I, um, I took a call this morning from a mechanic who was telling me he was really impressed with the repair times function on the system. Um, you might come to that in a minute, but I believe it gives all of the times for jobs like changing clutches or um, brake discs, wheels, etc. Yes, it does. Yeah, again, it, it, it's all as per manufacturer's um, service and repair time. So yeah. you'll, you'll be able to build a quote up. Um, we'll do that in just a second. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll end this quickly. If I, if I go on to here, the reason it took so long to load is because we've got so much information right. uh, against this vehicle, including things like tire pressure monitoring uh, system. So if I just go on to, um, let so quickly, let's see, uh, a drive belt installation. So just by clicking on that, um, I've got direction of belt travel um, and, a, and, a, and a, um, a description of how to remove the belt by locking the tensioner. Okay. Uh, so it's very, again, very clever stuff. Um, we mentioned repair time, so we'll have a look at a, a, a quick repair time, show you how to build a quote. Mm. Uh, so if we go into uh, brakes, we'll look at replacing both front brake discs okay. um, on this vehicle. Um, uh, brake discs. So you mentioned there, James, um, if you want to build a quote, I take it then that the system can do two things. It, it's useful for front of house quoting for, for work as well as the actual mechanic who needs to get instructions on what to do. Yeah, absolutely. As you, as you can see, there's nothing um, specialised in what I'm doing. I'm literally I'm selecting repair times, I'm going to brake system, yeah. uh, replace both front brake discs. The, the beauty of this system is that it, it also works out that, uh, well you can see, to replace the both front brake discs you need to remove, refit the, the, the wheels, the calipers, the pads, etc, etc. Um, underneath it, it gives you a follow-up work list. So whilst you're doing the uh, the replacing of the discs, you may need to machine uh, or clean the wheel hubs, um, and you may need to strip and clean the pistons and, and calipers. So by literally by clicking on one of these boxes, um, you can see it automatically updates the time taking and uh, taken rather and the price of the uh, of the job. Ah, okay. So automatic quoting. Excellent. Um, uh, I see so, a, a labour rate of forty euros an hour. Where does that come from, James? Uh, the labour rate, it, it's a default labour rate, you can change it very, very quickly. If I, if I just go up into account settings here, you can see I can change it to whatever your labour rate happens to be. Oh, so, okay. 56 euros an hour, let's update that, which it has done. And then if we go back into technical data, and then repair times. And then that should have updated your hourly rate. So if I were to look at brake disc again for you. Mm. So every user or garage can put in their own labour times? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's just literally a, a default labour rate that we've popped in there. Um, I, I've seen systems like this before, James, and one of the criticisms we had was um, where it doubled up on a lot of the work and made it very hard to quote accurately. Um, an example that I came across was where somebody was doing a timing belt and they wanted to renew the water pump at the same time. Um, and what should have been, a, say, a one and a half hour job was being quoted as a two and a half hour job when really it was only additional 20 minutes or so to, to affect the water pump. 
Is that something okay. that uh, E3 handles? It is indeed, yeah. If we go into um, Tooth Belt Engine Timing, um, we give you a very similar to the follow-up work you've just seen on, on that last job. So if we go into Timing Belt Kit here, um, as opposed to giving you a, a, a separate time um, for, say, for instance, replacing the tension or replacing the water pump, mm. um, you can see here that we've got a follow-up uh, follow work list. If I just remove the brake disc one for the time being... Um, oh, it, it actually stored the brake discs there? Just Yes, yeah. it, it, it does, yeah. You can, you, can, uh, you can literally, you can build a quote with five or six or seven or however many jobs you want to do. Oh, so that's good. I've just, I've just removed the brake disc for you, but... Um, so renew from cam. Uh, this is this is part of the um, engine tummy belt okay. uh, kit. Uh, you can see here that we've got renew from uh, uh, from camshaft door seal. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also got renew water pump. Right. So um, the time for doing the cam belt on this vehicle is is uh, one point nine hours. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I go into renew water pump, um, it just adds a continuation time on there. Uh, we'll just wait for that to update. There we go. Um, so you can see that that's that's one hour on its own. Right. Uh, and it brings the job to 184, uh, 32. So it, it's um, it's not going to charge uh, an extra hour for removing the belt and changing the tensioner. Uh -huh. It understands that you're already there and it's part of the job you're doing. Very um, good. And that, that, that's the beauty of having technical data written by technicians, mm. uh, is the fact that they understand the job that you're doing. So one thing I really wanted to show you um, before we run out of time. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a scenario. This Golf has come into your garage. Uh, it has the mill lighter engine warning light on. Mm -hmm. um, and it may not be a vehicle that you've seen before. Um, we've got a full fault diagnosis system um, built within uh, E3 Technical. Um, and it's called VESA. So the first thing we need to do is confirm the engine management unit that's uh, fitted to the vehicle. Unfortunately, manufacturers like to fit um, various different uh, ECUs uh, to vehicles depending on uh, where the vehicle is going, obviously okay. for emissions. Mm -hmm. um, so set up the engine management, in this case it, it, it's uh, just the one option of the Bosch. We'll go and apply and this will take me into a component list. So I can either go in via component uh, or I'll go in for code diagnosis. Um, so vehicles come in, it's got the engine warning light on. Uh, first thing I need to know is where do I plug my code reader into? It gives me a little diagram here so I can see it's uh, it's underneath the uh, underneath the steering wheel, uh -huh. and we're going to read a read a code, a generic fault code of P0400, uh, being a diesel. Um, I'm sure this is one that most of your uh, most of your viewers there are going to recognise. Uh -huh. It's EGR flow. Um, now, traditionally, uh, you get a P code, an error code for an EGR valve. Um, the first thing you do is remove the EGR valve and replace it. Um, well. What this system does is say, okay, it's a P0400, it's an EGR fault. It could be one of two things that, that's given you that fault. It could be the math sensor, the mass airflow meter, or it could be the EGR valve itself. Mm. Um, so for the sake of argument, we're going to go straight into EGR valve on this particular vehicle. So we'll show uh, diagnostic steps for that, uh, for that valve. The first thing it gives us is a wiring diagram of that particular component. Um, Bearing in mind you've not seen this vehicle before, uh -huh. uh, the first thing you do is click on picture and it will give us a picture of the component that, uh, that we're actually looking at. Um, the second thing we need to know is whereabouts in the engine bay it is. So if we uh, click on location here, it should give me a diagram. Here we go. So we can see it's right on the exhaust manifold. Uh -huh. um, so it shows us whereabouts it is on the engine bay. So we'll go back to our wiring diagram. We have our component right here. Um, very, very simple, one, two, and three. So firstly, check the supply voltage. Um, if we click on that, we get a picture of a multimeter come up and it gives us 13.2 volts. Mm. So you can see by connecting to the, uh, to the life side of the EGR valve uh, and on Earth, uh, turn the ignition on and measure the voltage. So have we got power to the unit? Um, if it's yes, obviously the solenoid's okay, but if it's no, uh, we then start interrogating the wiring for that particular component. Mm. Um, very, very clever. Um, you can work your way all the way through it. Yes, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And this actually takes us 
beyond that component, beyond that part of wiring diagram, mm -hmm. um, it takes us into uh, the fuse box, it takes us into the ECU pin data, it, it takes us all the way around the system. Um, but at every step of the way, it gives us a step-by-step -step diagnosis. Right. Uh, so we can actually diagnose either the component or we can diagnose the, um, uh, the, the, the wiring. The fault behind um, it, yeah. So you're saying that it, it could save you from buying an EGR, a new replacement part, putting it on and finding that the problem is still there. It could yeah, actually, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it gives you the option of, of not only interrogating the component, but interrogating the wiring. Okay. Um, and not only that, you don't have pages and pages and pages of wiring diagram to pull through and work out whereabouts it may be. Um, for instance, if I take that back a step, um, you see here we've got, uh, here we go, so wire colour, it gives us wire colour. Um, black red to the turbo pressure uh, control solenoid. If we click on that, it will find me an individual wire um, and it should also show me where the welds are within the wiring as well. So it's not just a question of um, selecting the, the uh, component or wire colour, um, it'll actually take me all the way back to the ECU. So. So um, this goes beyond normal diagnostics, doesn't it? This this really is manufacturing. Um, it's it's yeah. It, it's a bit like um, what's the, the the politest way of putting it? It's a bit like diagnostics for dummies. Um, mm. It just gives a, a, an independent garage the ability to uh, work on a car and do what is everything from relatively simple to relatively advanced diagnostics using nothing more than a multimeter in the system. Okay. Um, so it negates the, the, the need for spending thousands of euros on a, on a, a piece of diagnosis kit. Right. Um, right. Very, very clever system. Um, I notice we're, we're yeah, running out of a little bit of time, James, so is there anything else you'd like to point out? I see a couple of other options there in lubricants and fuse locations and all very useful, I'm very sure. Yeah, very quickly, if we just go to lubricant data, um, this, is, this is one of the, the, the problems with the system, is the more you use it, the more you find, so uh, I'll try and make this as quick as possible, but um, it will give you uh, the options for the various different oils uh, and transmission fluids, brake fluids, etc. So obviously engine oil, it gives us the SAE uh, 5W30, if we go to transmission oil, um, it will also give us, a, a, in this case, a VW part number for the oil. Um, uh, brake system, it gives us the brake fluid, air conditioning, it will give us the compressor oils and, and the refrigerant gas. Um, and it will then give us, if you go into capacitors, it will give us the capacity of every, um, every uh, lubricant. So if you go into engine oil, it will show us where the, um, the drain plug is, it will show us how many litres of oil it takes, um, also differential oil, uh, gear oil, etc. So yeah, again, it, it, it's all of the manufacturer servicing uh, information right at your fingertips. James, if I was um, somebody developing quotations for, for an independent dealer and I was doing it by the registration number of a car, it strikes me the only thing missing here is um, the actual parts or component prices themselves. Um, now, I'm thinking about what the garage might want out of it, but then I'm also thinking, hey, if I'm a parts distributor, I'd love to get my parts listed alongside all of this information. Is that possible or will it be possible? Um, watch this space. Um, <laughs> yes, it will be possible and it will be possible before, uh, before too long, okay. um, uh, imminently. Um, we, we're, we're working with a couple of um, parts factors at the moment to integrate their uh, parts within the system. Right. Um, and those, uh, those fortunate enough to have E3 technical uh, within their workshops at the moment, we'll probably find in the next week or two um, that they'll have uh, uh, an option to then quote using parts as well. Um, so watch this space. Well, any chance we could uh, check in with you in a week or two's time, James, and have another look at it, see how the parts yes. are shown? Yeah, absolutely. Please do. I'd be delighted to show you around and, and, and uh, show you any other features that, that, that happen to have been developed uh, since we spent last. So, yeah. James, that's fantastic. Thanks a million for showing us that, and we got it in in just under 20 minutes. Thank you very much. Okay, bye.